Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Tonight, we announce with pride that the Secretary of the Navy has awarded to the DuPont Company the coveted Navy E for excellence, being one of 14 American companies so honored for outstanding production of materials for national defense. This award, so eagerly sought by officers and men of the American Navy, is another indication of the all-out spirit of the men and women of DuPont in working toward a goal which has become the common objective of the American people. And now we bring you our play for tonight, a story of Clifford Holland, the great tunnel builder. Our drama, written by Robert Tallman, stars William Johnstone of the Cavalcade Players in the title role. Our orchestra and the original musical score are under the direction of Don Bury. DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents William Johnstone as Clifford Holland on the Cavalcade of America. <laughs> Battery Place, Manhattan, a few years after the turn of the century. A horse-drawn ambulance careens around the corner and draws up before a little crowd of people. All right, let me through here. Let me through, please. Is this the patient, officer? This is him, doctor. Uh, good alcoholism, huh? Down here, we call it the blind staggers, doctor. Uh, a little dizzy, that's all. Be all right in just a moment. Let me alone. Uh, you better come along and get sobered up. Yeah. A little hospital treatment won't do you any harm. No, no, hospital's all wrong. Mr. Holland says never let them take it. Hospital. It's the hospital uh, of the clink for you, Mike. So you'd better go along in the ambulance. I'll help you get him in there, Doc. Okay, I'll take his feet. Here we go. Hello. Hey, just a minute. Just a minute there. Now what? Uh, where are you taking this man? To the hospital, Mr. Holland. We can't let him roam around the street in this condition. But a hospital's the worst place you could take him. You think he's drunk, don't you? Think he's drunk? Listen, mister, I... Uh, well, he's not drunk. Just smell his breath. Uh, say, I guess he is, not it that? You a friend of this fellow? Mr. Holland's one of the engineers on the new tunnel over there. Yes, uh, you see, doctor, this man works for us as a sand hog, compressed air worker. He's suffering from one of the forms of caisson disease, the staggers. The staggers, that's it. You tell him, Mr. Holland. Anyway, you mustn't take him to a hospital. I'll see that he gets the proper treatment. But I can't turn an ambulance case over to you. Not even if it means the difference between life and death? I don't get it. There's only one treatment for what ails this man. He's got to be taken to the tunnel and put back under the compressed air for a while. Are you sure of that? If it's anything about tunnels, you can trust Mr. Holland, Doctor. Okay, okay. But the responsibility of not going to the hospital is his. Not mine and not yours, Mr. I understand, Doctor. Thank you. Come on, O'Rourke. We'll be out of these staggers in no time. <laughs> Flat on the bench here. Yeah. How does it feel now? It's better, Mr. Holland. Much better. Now keep your head clear. Hold your nose and force the air back to your eardrums, remember? Yeah. Yeah, my head's clearing up fine. What happened anyway? Something that's not going to happen again on this job. Not if I can help it, Mike. <laughs> tell you, Holland, I simply can't do it. The way things are going now, I'll be lucky if I break even on my part of this job. Then you shouldn't have ended such a low bid. You're not building a post office, you know. You're helping to build a tunnel under a river with men working under a pressure equal to three atmospheres. You should be prepared for anything. Can I help it if my competitors are optimists? There's another word for that kind of optimism. And the word is criminal. That's a pretty harsh way of putting it, Holland. But it's the truth. You knew what you were doing. The last East River Tunnel was an example. 3,692 cases of the bends. 20 dead that we know of. 
Heaven knows how many crippled or incapacitated for life. These men know what they're doing when they take tunnel jobs. That's not the point. When you contracted to do this job, you took somewhere between 500 and 1,000 human lives into your hands. If you don't believe that, wait till the state starts billing you for workman's compensation. And that'll be plenty at the present rate. Uh, compensation's something the politicians understand. But this plan of yours, four shifts a day, rest periods every three hours, why, the men will spend half their working time going on and off the job, sitting in those compression chairs. And they should. It's the only guarantee against the bends and the staggers and all the other horrors the doctors are pleased to call caisson disease. I thought you were an engineer, Holland. You're talking like a social reformer. I'm an engineer, all right. That's why I hate to see waste in any form. Well, you're new to this work. You'll get used to it. Then you refuse to adopt this plan? That, my boy, is exactly the case. I refuse. <laughs> Mr. Holland? How are you, Pat? What's the matter, Mr. Holland? You look all in. Oh, a little tired, it's all left. Hey, Holland, come on down here. I want you to meet a guy. Oh, yeah, Mike. Glad to see you, Mike. How's it going? Well, if I get staggered tonight, it'll be from good ride. <laughs> well, you better take it easy. Well, where's this guy you wanted me to meet? Oh, all right here. Uh, Timmy Ryan, meet Mr. Holland, my boss. Hello. Timmy's just visiting. He's a sand hog with the Brooklyn crew. My cousin. Well, glad to meet you, Ryan. How are things going on your side? Oh, way ahead of your crew, Mr. Holland. Oh? Uh, what about the men? Many cases of the bends? What kind of a tunnel guy do you call this, Mike? We don't talk about them things, Mr. Holland, see? Oh, sorry. But uh, maybe you ought to talk about it. You see, I'm... I interested... said we don't talk about them things, mister. You heard me that time, didn't you? Now, listen, Tim Ryan, you ain't talking to no Brooklyn straw boss. You're talking to a friend of mine. Keep a civil tongue on your head. Mr. Holland wants to talk about the bends, then we talk about the bends. See? Okay, you asked for it. What? Now I'm going to let you have it. Now listen, take it easy. Let me at him. No cheap New York sand is going to tell me how to be polite. Uh, break it up, you fellas. I don't want no trouble in this town. Uh, tell him to talk decent. Come outside if you're so anxious to fight. I wouldn't want to shock Mr. Holland. I can see he's a college man. Uh, Ryan, I like you. I like a guy with plenty of scrap in him. That's why I think we'd better understand each other right now. Huh? Hold these specs of mine a minute, will you, Mike? Uh, what are you going to do, Mr. Holland? I want to show your cousin a little something I learned at home. Oh, 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 oh. hey, By gosh, who would have thought it? Right on the bottom. You better dump that pitcher of water over him. He'll be a little quieter from now on, I imagine. Well, Mr. Holland, I didn't know you had it in you. I, oh, here's your spec. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> oh, what happened? Here. Let me give you a hand. Oh, say, Mr. Holland, what else did they teach you in college? <laughs> All right, boys, this one's on me. Right, Mr. Holland, sir. Oh, yes, Jim, what do you have? Mr. McMartin sent me over to look for you, sir. i just come off the job. Anything wrong? Everything's wrong, sir. The whole shield's flooded. But what about the men? We, we all got out in time. Pump's working? Yes, sir, but she floods in fast so we can pump it out. Well, did you try grouting and bagging the leak? We tried everything. Nothing does any good. Uh, say that change for me, Joe. I've got a rush. Now, what are you going to do, Mr. Holland? I don't know, Mike. This is something they didn't teach me at Harvard. <laughs> the news? Yes, I've just been down there. Well, what are we going to do? We'll have to increase the air pressure to at least 48 pounds. Yeah, that'll finish the whole crew, Holland. None of you adopt my plan. Accustom them slowly to the pressure, work them in 30-minute shifts. And increase our labor costs six times. Yes. Yes, it will. You're sure this plan of yours will work? Absolutely. All right, Holland, you win. Have it your way. But believe me, if it doesn't work, it was your idea, mister, not mine. Now, what's all this about? All right, gang, line up here. The doctor's going to examine the old ticker. What? What's the big idea? I got no car trouble. Mr. Holland says you got to. Well, then it must be okay. Well, Doc. You'll do. Next. Uh, no, uh, not him, Doctor. What's the matter with me? Uh, we can't use any fat men, Mr. Holland's orders. I'm a hard worker. I know. But you fellas are going under heavier pressure than most of you have ever worked under. 
For some reason, a stout man is more susceptible to the bends. It's a matter of the nitrogen in the bloodstream. And what's that? Uh, it's a gas. Blows you up like. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay, doctor, these other men are all right. Sound as can be. Okay, come along. Right. Now, for the benefit of you new men, we go into the airlock now. You just sit there and Mr. Holland tells you you can go out the other side. Can we smoke? You can try. Maybe you study the fire eaters in the circus. Well, that's what a cigarette does under pressure. Poof! Like that. Okay, here we go. All in? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, shut the door. All set now, Mr. Holland. Good. Now, uh, you new men, just watch the others. You'll notice that they hold their noses to force the air back to their eardrums. That uh, relieves the pressure on the sinuses, too. Otherwise, your head may get blocked. And uh, I can assure you that's very painful. All right, O'Rourke, turn the bell. All right. Any of you feel any discomfort yet? No, <coughs> uh, this is nothing, Mr. Holland. <coughs> Shall I speed it up? <coughs> uh, wait, Mike, wait. Uh, this new fellow over here isn't taking it so well. Cut it for a second. All right. Yeah. You all right? You want to go through with this, fellow? <coughs> sure. <coughs> I'm all right. <coughs> it's better now. Oh, fine. Now, uh... I want you all to watch your reactions carefully from now on. We're getting up to the really high pressure. You better count it off on the gauge there, Mike. All right, here goes. 35, 7, 8, <coughs> 9, <coughs> 40. Hey, stop a second. What? Hold it. <coughs> yeah. All right, go on now. 42, 3, 4, <coughs> Five, six, seven, forty-eight. Okay, cut it. Well, how do you fellas feel? I feel swell, like I had a shot of straight brandy. Well, that's what we've got to look out for. Your bodies are getting several times the normal amount of oxygen. It makes you feel peppy, but your energy burns out sooner. So I want you to let me know the minute you feel the slightest fatigue. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, let's get to the job. Now, uh, I want the new man to listen very carefully, please. This is the shield. It's been out of operation for a while, so you don't see it under actual operating conditions. Uh, these are the hydraulic jacks. They push the shield forward through the muck. The muck comes through these openings like uh, toothpaste coming out of a tube. Now, your job is to clean it away and load it on these cars. And keep out of the way of that big crane when they start pulling the new uh, steel sections into place. Well, I guess that's all. Uh, Mr. Holland, being as I'm foreman, do you think I have the right to shovel away the first of the muck? <laughs> sure, I guess so. Why do you want to, Mike? Uh, I don't know. I figure there have been so many changes on the job, it's like starting all over again. Uh, it's like something they might write in a book. How's it going, Mike? All right. Fine, Mr. Holland. That's fine. Good. You uh, boys all feel all right? Sure, sure Mr. Holland. Yeah, hey, this is Cinch. All right, I uh, think you'd better go up and tell the other ship to get ready. It's probably about as long as we should stay under this pressure. You feel punk too, Mr. Holland? Yeah. In fact, I think I'm coming with you. Uh, well, Mr. Holland, it looks like your plan was, was working out. Yes, I... How do you feel now, Mike? I'm uh, tired and chilly. You always do when you're coming out of that air in there. Just tired and chilly, huh? Yeah, that's all. Well, we're back in God's air again, Mr. Holland. How's about something to eat? Sure. Where are we going? Oh, I, I know a little Italian place. Right up on Nassau Street. It's in the... <laughs> Mike. Mr. Holland. What is it? I don't know. I feel like I was being stabbed with all my joints. Let me, let me hold you. Now, it Here. Must be. Yeah. I'm afraid it's the fence, Mike. I guess my little plan didn't work out so well after all. I'm Kelly 
Satan, your God will punish you for what this tunnel is doing to our men folks, mister. Sending men down there under the river like rats when you know what's happening to them. Mrs. O'Rourke, I'm trying to tell you we've made tremendous improvements since your son was stricken. Chances of a thing like that happening again are very slight. Oh, so it is, is it? And how about my own nephew, Timmy Ryan, as was struck with a bend in Fulton Street on his day off only last week? Well, there are still isolated cases. And what but... do you think your smart Mr. Holland done when he found out Timmy had been took to the hospital? What did he do? Well, he comes over there and gives the doctors a cussing out and takes Timmy back into that foul pressure lock that caused all his troubles to begin with. Well, I think I better look into this. Holland? Yes, what is it? Come into my office, will you? Right away, sir. Oh, I'm telling you, if that man comes in here, I'll not be responsible for my actions. Well, calm yourself, Mrs. O'Rourke. At least wait till you hear what he has to say. Oh, he must put my Michael in the hospital bed. You want to see me, sir? Yes, come in, Holland. This is Mrs. O'Rourke. Oh, you're Mike's mother, aren't you? Well, this is a pleasure. The pleasure's your own, Mr. Holland. What hospital? I'm putting him in the airlock. That's our standard procedure now. First I heard of it. Your nephew's responding very well, Mrs. O'Rourke. Yes. In fact, it's a very interesting case. You talk like my Timmy was a guinea pig. No, Mrs. O'Rourke. There's one important difference between Timmy and a guinea pig. Timmy has a will of his own. Huh. He chose to leave the hospital. You mean you talked him into it with your big sound and talk? Well, I can talk big too, Mr. Holland. And the assemblyman in my district says if I want to talk big enough, I can put the lot of you in jail for what you tunneled under Michael Rourke and the others. I don't doubt that you can, Mrs. O'Rourke. But what about Mike? Would he want you to? Well, maybe not, but that don't change what you've done to him and the others as I see it. I can see it doesn't. But it should, shouldn't it? What do you mean? Would you rather have Mike digging a ditch somewhere or doing something he thinks is important? Oh, you're, you're trying to get me mixed up. No, I'm not. But why? Why does it have to be like this, Mr. Holland? Why can't people be safe and live their lives? Oh, it's men like you that cause all the trouble in the world. People was just as happy without a tunnel. Why do you do it? If I knew the answer to that question, Mrs. O'Rourke, I wouldn't be building a tunnel. I'd be sitting on a cloud, telling the wind which way to blow. Reporting for duty, sir. Mike, I knew you'd be back in the job before we hauled through. Ah, it was Tim Ryan, me cousin, that done it, sir. Well, how's that? Him and his bragging. Oh, his gang tunneling from Brooklyn was ahead of our gang tunneling from Manhattan. Uh, it ain't true, is it, Mr. Holland? Well, if it is, it won't be for long with you back in the job. <laughs> you coming below, sir? Yes, I thought I'd have a look in. See how things are going. Come on, let's go. Oh, uh... By the way, Mike, did they give you that badge you're supposed to carry? Yeah, oh, sure, sure. It's in my pocket. What's it all about? Well, read what it says on it. Huh? Compressed air worker. If this man is stricken with bends or staggers in the street, do not send him to a hospital. Send him at once to Brooklyn Tunnel Hospital Lock. I think that's a good idea, don't you? Yes, I do. That stands to reason. Say, you've learned a lot of things since I've been gone, haven't you, Mr. Holland? Yes, Mike. I'm afraid we have. Out of my way there. Mike all rocks gonna bolt this section in place. Mike, when did you get back? Never mind that. Hand me that log, you log. Here you are, Mike. Thank you kindly. Hey, Mike, look out. She's buckling there. Uh, it's a big, the big one, too. All right. Stand back from that opening, all of you. Keep quiet. What is it, Mike? Uh, I don't know, Mr. Holland. Jim, hand me a bag of that straw. Yeah. Yes, a move, Mike. <laughs> no use, Mr. Holland. Don't do no good. But this straw just sucks into there like it was a vacuum cleaner. Hey, I... You better come down from there, Mike. Okay, I... Hey, I can't, Mr. Holland. My arm's stuck in there. It's pulling me. Hey, quick. 
Couple of you fellas, give a hand here. Come on, pull, pull hard. Don't let go of his feet. Don't let go. Boys, run for it. It'll get us all. Run for the lock, quick. Run. Everybody there? Okay, bolt the door now. Boy, why was that close? How many here? Uh, 24, 25. They're four gone, Mr. Howard. Four? Four of the swellest guys I ever knew. What's happened, Mr. Howard? We hit a soft spot in the clay. The air pressure in the shield must have made a perfect vent pipe to the bed of the river. Mike and the others... Sucked right into it. The poor guy. Does this mean there won't be no tunnel, Mr. Collins? Yes, yes. Oh, no, no. There'll be a tunnel. I guess we can stop that hole by dumping a clay blanket from a barge on top. Right now, I'm not thinking about the tunnel. I'm thinking of those men. Funny, I've been looking forward to holding through for weeks. Now that the day's here, my heart's not in it. Yeah, I guess I know what you're thinking. Mike and the other boys. Yeah. Well, I guess we may as well go on below. All right. Hey, Mr. Holland, wait for me. Mike! Mike! <laughs> Where on earth did you come from? Well, you didn't think you was going to hold through without me now, did you, Mr. Holland? But you're dead. <laughs> You can't be Mike. Yes, I was, or so I thought, sir. But what happened? Come on, tell us. Well, when I left you fellas, I didn't know anything more till Zingo. I popped like a cork up through the water. Mighty near scared the crew of Jersey coal barge out of their wit. <laughs> but where have you been since then, Mike? Well, I I wouldn't want it known generally, Mr. Holland, but I've been in a kind of nut house over in Jersey. Trying to convince a gang of doctors that I'm not crazy, but I really did pop out of the riverbed. <laughs> Okay, stand back, all you guys. Ready for a blast. We're going to hold through. And quiet, please. This is a historical moment. <laughs> okay, let her go. We hit it within an eighth of an inch. <laughs> well, if it ain't my cousin Tim Ryan. <laughs> oh, no, you don't jump, Dad. Get back there, you. Help me up there, boys. Mr. Holland says I'm to be the first through, didn't you, Mr. Holland? You bet your life, Mike. Get going. Boy, jinx, I will. Easy there. Oh, no need to pinch. <laughs> nice work, Mike. Ah, Timmy Ryan. <laughs> I hate to say it to your face, but this is the first time I was ever glad to see a relative from Brooklyn. <laughs> Clifford Milburn Holland had achieved in his lifetime what engineers had been attempting since Ralph Dodd planned the world's first subaqueous tunnel under the Thames River in 1798. But Clifford Holland's greatest monument is not any of the six great tunnels built under his guidance or even the amazing Hudson River Tunnel which bears his name, but rather the medical report on the construction of his last tunnel, completed the year he died at the age of 41. Of the 2,500 sand hogs who drove the famed Holland Tunnel through to completion, not one met death due to compressed air. The Cavalcade of America thanks William Johnstone and the Cavalcade players for their performance of the story of Clifford Holland. In addition to his great contribution to the safety of men on the job, one of Holland's achievements was greater mechanical speed in the assembling of tunnel segments, made possible by an automatic ratchet which he himself perfected. Today, both safety and speed are of vital importance in all aspects of national defense. And in the field of production, science is playing a major role. Now, in our story of chemistry at work in our world, we're going to tell you about a new explosive rivet 
that is speeding up airplane construction. A rivet is a pin that clamps two sheets of metal together. It may be large, like the white-hot steel rivets used in putting up a structural steel building, or it may be smaller than the tip of your little finger. These small rivets, made of aluminum alloy, are what are used to fasten an airplane together. Here is good news of a startling innovation. An explosive rivet, perfected by DuPont, is speeding up American aircraft production today. Now being manufactured in commercial quantities, this rivet is of an entirely new type. A small charge of high explosive is locked away in a hollow at the end of the shank. Heat, applied to the head of the rivet by a specially designed electric gun, detonates the charge. The explosion expands the charged end of the shank and forms a blind head, setting the rivet. Numerous safety tests have shown that these rivets, in the hands of trained operators, are very safe to handle and may be used without fear of injury. Airplanes of all metal construction require some 40,000 to 500,000 rivets per plane, according to size. This riveting job is one of the most exacting and tedious confronting plane builders. For example, the new B-19 Douglas bomber, the largest ship of its kind ever built, has something like 3 million rivets. Gang riveting machines, automatic hole punching and rivet driving devices, and high amperage spot welding are used wherever they can be. But by and large, these shortcuts can be used only in places that allow access to both sides. And engineers estimate that from 800 fastening points in an all-metal pursuit plane to as many as 10,000 in the largest all-metal bomber are accessible from one side alone. Here is one place where DuPont's explosive rivets are widening the bottleneck. At the Glen L. Martin plant in Baltimore, where America's new B-26 medium bombers are made, riveters simply insert a rivet into a hole and touch it with the tip of a DuPont riveting iron. Installation time has been cut to a few seconds. A man can seat 15 to 20 of the new rivets in one minute. And so accurate is the explosive charge that expansion of the shank may be controlled within 20 thousandths of an inch, meeting the exacting demands of American precision manufacture. An additional advantage is that the new rivets weigh only one quarter as much as the old blind fasteners that were used in tight corners where riveting from one side was necessary. In supplying plane producers with explosive rivets, a major problem has been solved by the men who bring you, in the words of the DuPont Pledge, better things for better living through chemistry. And now a word about next week's program. Next week, Cavalcade stars Agnes Moorhead in the role of Josephine Baker, the great living American woman doctor. Her work in establishing public health clinics and care for children forms a stirring chapter in American medical history. In our weekly story of chemistry at work in our world, we will tell you about man-made spinnerets that spin delicate fibers which make lovely fabrics possible. Fabrics made from American raw materials right here at home. We hope you listen at this same time next week when DuPont again presents the Cavalcade of America. Cavalcade wishes to thank officials of the Port of New York Authority for their generous assistance in the technical preparation and direction of this program. On the Cavalcade of America, your announcer is Clayton Collier, sending best wishes from DuPont. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.